There is a place, my brothers and sisters, that is waiting for those righteous, believing servants of Allah. A place that is so beautiful. A place where there are things which no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind can even imagine. This is a place where there will be peace. No jealousy, no hatred, no envy, no rancor, no greed, no lust. None of the things that causes problems amongst human beings. It is a place of complete, perfect happiness. Where every moment will be more beautiful and more happy and more enjoyable than the moment that was from before it. This is a place whose soil, the soil is of musk. Whose pebbles are from precious stones. The trees of this place are made of gold and silver. Yet from these trees comes fruit easy to reach and beautiful to eat. In this place, there are couches of silk and gold brocade where its inhabitants will be served by youths of perpetual freshness like guarded pearls. This is a place where when you eat, you don't eat because you're hungry. When you drink, you don't drink because you're thirsty. You eat and drink out of pleasure, just for enjoyment. This is a place where there are companions, the Horalain, the wide-eyed, firm-breasted virgins of paradise, who no man has seen, my brothers, no man has seen your Hur, your wife in paradise, no man has seen. She has been created specifically for you, created by Allah especially. And she is so beautiful. She is so beautiful. She is so perfect. If one tear from her eye was to fall on this earth, the whole of this earth, just one tear, this earth would smell so sweet. Subhanallah. This is Jannah. This is paradise. And what are the places, the abode, the houses, the palaces? Think about this. Think about this. The tent, the tent of a person in paradise, just the tent, is a hollowed out pearl 60 miles wide, the tent. If that is the tent in Jannah, what is the palace in Jannah going to be like? If this is the tent, what is the palace going to be like? And there is no evil speech. There is no backbiting. There is no slandering. There is no gossiping. There is no lying, no cheating, no stealing. No, none of that in paradise. But what there will be in paradise are the angels greeting us. And the company of the righteous. Imagine I want you to imagine this. Really imagine it in your mind's eye. Jannah, paradise, this place, it exists. Allah has already created it and it is waiting for us. Imagine meeting the prophets. Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh. I'm really looking forward if Allah lets me get to Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us, for genital fardos, ameen. 
to meet Nuh alayhi salam. A man who gave da'wah to his people for 950 years. He struggled in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 950 years. And only a handful of people, some scholars say just 70 people became Muslim. Just 70. Even his own son did not accept his message. Where did he find the patience? His dawah. He called publicly, he called privately. He called secretly, he called openly. How did you do that, Nuh? Tell us about it. Tell us your dawah stories. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, subhanallah, the khalil of Allah, the close friend of Allah, close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To meet him, to talk with him, to hear him talk about his life, about his dawah, about the challenges that he faced, how he stood in front of that tyrant, Nimrod, how he challenged his people and their worship of idols, and how he built the Kaaba with his son, Ismail, Subhanallah. And of course, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To meet Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To be able to talk with the Messenger of Allah, whose Sunnah we follow, whose Deen we claim to be followers of. To meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To talk with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Bakr. And Umar. And Uthman. And Ali. And Hassan and Hussein. And Abu Huraira. And Abdullah ibn Abbas. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And, and. Subhanallah. This is Jannah. Oh, that's not the end. Because all of this is nothing compared, compared to seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To see the face of Allah. Subhanallah. It is the most beautiful thing in paradise. That we will be able to look upon the face of Allah. And you know what? The worst punishment in the hellfire, worse than the fire, worse than the tree of Zakum, worse than the boiling water that will scald the faces and burn the insides. The worst punishment in Jahannam is that the people in Jahannam will know that they will never be able to see the face of Allah. That's their worst punishment for them. And how long is this paradise, my brothers? How long will we be there in this paradise? A year? Five years? A weekend? Maybe a quick weekend break would be great, right? No, forever. Khalidina fiha. They will stay there forever. Forever and ever for eternity in Jannah. Forever. This is what it is all for. This is what it is all about. But I have to give you some news. This is the good news. But I have to give you some more news. You may think it's bad news, but it's not. And we'll see hopefully why. The reality of Jannah is this. Jannah is surrounded by difficulties, hardships, trials, tests, and tribulations. 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created Jannah, He said to Jibreel, alayhi salam, O Jibreel, go to my paradise and tell me what you think. So Jibreel, he went to Jannah and he came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, oh Allah, anybody who hears about this place, they will definitely enter into it. Then Allah surrounded paradise with difficulties and hardships and trials and tests. And then he said to Jibreel, now go and look at my paradise. And then Jibreel came back, he said, Allah, I am afraid nobody will enter into it. You see, Jannah is not for free. If we want Jannah, we have to work for Jannah. We have to struggle for Jannah. We have to make an effort. Now, some people may think that this is bad news. But actually, even it is not bad news. And I want you to think about something in your own life. Think about your own life. Most people, if you ask them, ask them, what will make you happy? Most people will say, and this is proven through so many surveys that have been carried out scientifically asking people what will make them happy most people say money if they don't say money they say something material and you look at these people in england a brother was asking me just now all the trouble in england right now what is it is it sectarian violence i said no it's not sectarian violence these are people intoxicated with the love of the dunya. They are drunk with the love of the things of this world. They are people who have been indoctrinated to run after the world and the things of the world and to care about nothing else and not to wait, not to work. They've been told you can have what you want and you can have it now, today. And that's what they literally went and did. They took the opportunity and they saw it. To get what they want right now, today, with no work. Just smash and grab. This is what happens when you indoctrinate nations of people with nothing but mindless consumerism and love of this world.